Hi everyone, so this is something I've wanted to get to for a while. Now, Tana Mojo went on the Zach Sang show, which got cancelled, but now is back again? I don't know, I, all I remember is, I used to watch this show and he would like interview celebrities and stuff like that, and then it like got cancelled or something, but like now it's back, obviously, and it's like a different, is that Harry Styles in the background? Whatever. Um, but I wanted to watch this one because I've seen so many clips from it, um, and it's basically Tana Mojo. Um, at the start, she's kind of talking about, I think, like, sobriety. And then she goes into talking about Jeff Wittick and David Dobrik. And apparently it's messy. So I'm excited to watch it. Um, my feelings for Tana Mojo are so up and down these days. Is that a Celsius? Is that that energy drink? I wasn't the biggest fan of it whenever I was in America. I'm going to be honest. Um, my feelings on Tana Mojo are so mixed. I feel like now I'm just kind of like... I feel like when she minds her business or whatever, she can be a pretty likable person. Um, and I've, I've been getting that vibe from her recently. Um, so I feel like whenever she went on the H3 podcast and she was talking about like her family and stuff like that, um, I feel like I saw a different side of her. But we will get to this and I have no idea really what to expect other than I know that she really opens up about Jeff and David and even Zach opens up about both of them. So again, I think she opens with talking about like sobriety and stuff like that. And then around like, around like the 10 minute mark, she starts talking about um, Javid and Javid. It's Jeff and David put together. Jeff and David. Um, and apparently it's really messy. So let's get into it. I hope you're all doing well. And let's go. We have, like, we run, like, our circles run very similarly. Okay, so, like, go. going on Zach saying today, I can't believe this. Like, I was, oh, my God, I was just losing my mind. I never thought we'd end up becoming, like, pretty good friends. Literally. I mean, I see you out all the time. We, we have, like, we run, like, our circles run very similarly. So, like, 100%. we see each other a lot. Constantly. Like, I, I, yeah. I've watched more concerts with you in the last, like, year and a half. Than maybe anybody else. Honestly, you know, the other night when I saw you at Nessa, I was so excited to see you. Oh my god, Nessa Barrett, that's the TikTok person. All my friends were just at her concert yesterday in London. Yes, I just, it's like something about you feel safe. I'm like, I can just vibe out, talk my shit. No, by the way, mutual. You know that. Like, I you just gave that. me goosebumps. Like, you really, uh, you give safety. And I think with that, like, God's truth, and, and I'm so happy God's to have truth. you here because. Since your our show in 2019, you go on to do a thousand trillion podcasts in a way that like would go on and showcase your personality and define you in a different light than anything else. With H3 and what you're doing with Jeff, you do your own podcast, yeah. which is now gone, but now coming back. So much to talk about. But well, you have so, like you. I'm trying to put this into words. You have been the OG podcast, the OG. Oh, interview. she's wearing Uggs. I the, love like, Uggs. You know what I mean? It's you. Not your show summer, and interviewing winter. people has been such a thing before the podcast world kind pretty. of blew up and became so oversaturated. And you know what I mean? That's true. And it's weird um, to think about. And at the time when I went on your stuff, it I wasn't in that podcasting <laughs> era. It wasn't a thing. You know what I mean? And now they're just everywhere. Every I feel like my mailman has a podcast. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's like not. You're not joking. But you being on that couch. I don't know, dude. Like, th your first appearance was really incredibly good. Um, and uh, people got a chance to know you in a really different way. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that time was just so, so different. And uh, thinking about that interview and ev When was she on at last? Let me Google this real quick. Tana Mojo, Zach, Sang. When was she on last? Can't really see her. I mean, maybe it was delete. Oh, talks. Oh. What's up, guys? I'm Tana. Wow, three years ago, 2019. Oh, yeah. Tana Mojo talks Jake Paul wedding. Yeah. Seems to be a much different era. She looks a lot better now. Everything I probably said, I would go back and watch it now and be like, oh, my God, this girl has a lot to learn. And I thought I knew everything at that time. Well, you because know? you're also at, like, peak popularity at that moment, mm -hmm. right? Like, you are more viral than fucking ever you're either coming off of or going into marrying jake paul mm, i'm sitting yeah. down on I your show like it's, i'm so in love everything's so figured out this is it this is my path like no i oh my god i had so much adulting to do at that time and didn't even realize it and now when you look at where you're at and there's been growth between 2019 and 2023 mm -hmm. would how would so. you describe your world today compared to your world back then that's okay um I think th I'm gonna be honest. I always thought that the uh, Jake Paul thing was a bit. I always thought that it was a bit, but then it always seemed like she was actually in love with Jake Paul, and that Jake Paul just kind of loved the bit they were doing. Which I always felt bad for her, but I was like, I always thought they were like in it together. You know what I mean? They were in it together. They were in it together for like the clout. And Cyrus is going 
at it behind me. Everything was just so different then. That was like the YouTube vlog, get views, move without thinking era. You know, I was just I think posting she did and fall in love doing with it. and being so crazy. And, and I mean, I understand her because it's like, if you're like pretending to be a couple and pretending to, you know, get married and pretending to be in love with each other, I'm going to be honest, like, I wouldn't be able to do it with, like, catching feelings. And I think it's a very, like, I always sympathize with her in that. And also Jake Paul's awful, so, like, You know, I think you think at 19, 20, and 21 and stuff, even 22, you have everything figured out. And I'm sure I'll look back at 24 and think I have everything figured out. You know what I mean? Like, think I thought I had everything figured out then. But I just, I thought I had everything fucking figured out. And so much ended up happening. I don't know. I had a lot of life to live. Well, in a lot of a lot of life, to isn't she also like twenty three? I'm saying this as someone who's like twenty. Live and then a lot of change to go through. Mm-hmm. Because you go through. I mean, did you know in twenty nineteen? She was what one in twenty nineteen. Saw your career think, as or twenty twenty. No, I don't 21. think I'm bad at that. Still, I think I always am just like I'm Tana and I'm Tanaing around and somehow it's on camera and it is what it is. You know what I mean? But looking back, it's like that time was just so crazy and i don't think i knew it i think i was just doing it but i think had i known it i think that's a blessing and a curse you know like being hyper aware of what it was maybe would have been a bad thing for me at the time and i think i was just doing and living you know living you you were able to build a foundation at least build a community or people who give a shit about you tanning enough (laughs) to kind of ride through the last i mean when I think about the last few years for you, I think canceled, mm-hmm. and then I think canceled being canceled, mm-hmm. and then I think uh, dizzy, di- right? Canceled is her podcast, by the way. Like he's not being like you got canceled. He's like canceled your podcast, and then your podcast canceled being canceled for context. Yeah. Uh, then I think uh, Tana Weed. Yeah, Tanabis is coming. Tanabis is what on. What a the- genius name, Tanabis. Just brilliant, brilliant. And so on brand, uh, brilliant. I always thought it was brilliant. Way, yeah. I think OnlyFans, correct? For sure. <laughs> I remember when you had your own little agency. Yeah, I still do. I just don't really go as hard. Uh, oh my god! Remember, it was like Angel's agency or something where she was going to bring people on and be their mentor. Nothing ever happened of that. I think that was just another one of like her many scams, allegedly. With the promotion, like, has there been focus? Have, like, yeah. have you figured out like what actually drives you and what you give a shit about? For sure. I Money. think that if anything, at that time, I was so much more like, I'm down to do whatever, spread myself so thin. Like, you know, everything was just kind of a mess then. And I love You know arcs. what I mean? Now I'm able to kind of hone in on what I'm passionate about and what I love doing and work on projects that I feel like will fulfill and stabilize my future that I love as well. I think I've finally gotten to the point now where I can like, say no to shit and I'm not Mm. doing shit I don't want to do and like I'm not putting too much on my plate and I'm also running my own business you know at the time I was very much fully reliant on like my manager and fully reliant on just the people around me to help me and stuff and now I've kind of just like become an adult and like do my shit on my own. She's and still so know young. What I'm passionate about, I guess. And in reality, like, like a, nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna look out for you like you, right? Yeah. And if you put responsibility age. and trust in a bunch of other people's hands, she's 24. Jeff is 33. Jake Paul 26. God, it freaks me out that Emma Chamberlain is only 21. And it's like mm-hmm. you never know where you're gonna end up. And I definitely just didn't know that. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I definitely was. Just Sasha, like, thank you. Yeah, I was I was a wild child as well. I think I had a couple more years of getting all that craziness and partying and learning about how to control that and manage that. Doesn't as she well still in do that? System, you know, you've been sober going on seventy five days, right? Yes. Oh my god, really? I've been doing seventy five hard. Um, oh wow! Which is it's funny now because normally when I see you out, Zach is we're both wild and we're drunk, and I'm like, yes. And I feel like the last, like, five times I've seen you, I'm like, hey, I'm leaving in 20 minutes. It's great to see you. Oh, my God. Good for her. Good for her. Like, just, like, fucking, I can't do it anymore the way I used to. Good I mean, it's her. about to end, and I'm going to have a little fun, but I feel great, and I've been loving it, you know? What changes? Like, what, what 
happens where you're like, I, I need to commit to this to prove yeah. to prove something to yourself. What is it for? All of that, I guess. I mean, I've done little like 30 day challenges a bunch. I like to kind of take factor. Did she say she's doing 75 hard? That's difficult. What is that? 75 days sober? Is that what that is? 75 day hard. What is 75 day hard? For 75 consecutive days, uh, must follow a diet. The diet must be a good eating plan where no alcohol or meals outside of your chosen diet are allowed. Hmm. It's like a workout health thing. It's out of my life because I think it's very scary when you begin to feel dependent on anything mm. to feel a certain way or even just when something becomes too comfortable. You don't necessarily notice the patterns of things becoming too comfortable, like drinking and partying and stuff like that. And... Um, Mind, body, spirit. I don't know. I just, I, the last couple months of this year were super crazy for me. I'm from Vegas, which has its pros, but it also has its cons. So when you go home for the holidays and Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and all that back to back, we were just wilding out in Vegas. And I think my last straw was this, the very beginning of this January, we went on like a very wild trip to Miami. And I'm sure you know how. Miami treats you. Um, it is your. You have to do two forty-five minute workouts a day, and one of them has to be outside. And you have to read every day, eat certain things, stuff like that. Oh wow! Best and your worst friend. It is so fun, but it is might be hell on earth. You know, like just the way you feel coming back and the actions. At least for me, that I have out there. <laughs> Would you regret? Um, nothing in specifics. My voice goes up ten octaves. <laughs> nothing in specifics. Um, no, but it was just a wild, wild week. The whole, the yacht. The idea of Miami scares me. I mean, Alex Earl on TikTok, like, graduated from Miami. And, like, her graduation service was, like, a club. Parties and the strip club. I think at one point we were in 11, the strip club. And I turned a page and she's like, hey, let's go. And it's, like, 6 a.m. Wow. And I'm like. This to be honest, this is what I do in Brighton. So, I mean, I. Probably would fit in very well, Miami. Trip club closes at 8 a.m. What do you mean? I'm <laughs> staying till 8 a.m. Whatever. And I come back and I just, I feel like fucking death. And I think that's the thing as well. Like 21, a hangover is like. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I definitely thought I was invincible in regards to that for so long. And I think I came back and I felt like I was on death row. And I was like, this is the perfect time to just, especially work wise, I'm like, so focused on canceled is about to come back on uh, April seventh. I'm mm -hmm. so excited. Mm -hmm. Um, and Tanabis and God, I've that been, name is so good. Buy my first house because I put that off for so long. Congratulations! Thank you. I I should have done it years ago. Like I just, but as I'm in this process, I see why I didn't. Mm -hmm. It's like such a fucking big hard adult. Just all these things were kind of lining up big hard adult decisions and i was like this is a really good time for me to lock in and be my best self and i just feel super focused and like my clarity is on 10 and good I'm, for her that's why i'm not probably not going to come on here today and like air a bunch of people out and be psycho because it's like my brain i have seen clips about the following thing with jeff and david so that's not necessarily true but we'll give her you know we'll give her something Things in a good spot you know does any part of you want to keep the soberness going because you so looks good like ab from it <sighs> yes like, I just said this in my most recent YouTube video. I was like, there's a part of me that would love for this to be my constant lifestyle. But it does, I will, it, like, just straight up admit, like, I don't understand, at least for me. Like, shit's not fun. <laughs> like, it just, you know, nice niche moments are fun. This is fun. But it's not the same type of wild fun and i've always been a very wild fun person so i just genuinely feel like that part of life is missing and it's i was talking to jeff about this the other day in the car and he's been sober for like five six years type of thing and he was like i'm gonna be I so real with you jeff. like that never changes like i'll always just feel like i have less fun than i did now so that's kind of a hard thing for me to stomach because yeah that's really scary yeah like i seeing all my friends her and jeff are not dating chat Lydia, for context, her and Jeff are good friends, though. Have, like, so much fun at shit. You know what I mean? Mm. And I'm just like, whew. Like, I, I'm just, it, it makes me such a hermit, homebody, grandma, fucking, I want to take a bubble bath and read a book, and it's embarrassing. <laughs> well, because your social life definitely, it changes. And you realize what you hate. You realize the people you don't want to fucking be around. You realize the things that are just not 
fun that you have to make fun in that regard. You know, like, let's say I have to go to the club for a birthday or an event. I'm like looking around at like the ceilings. I'm like, damn, this place is like kind of dingy. <laughs> like, you know, like you don't realize all those type of things. So it's like, I, I'm, I want to be able to try to find a balance in that. And I think that will be my journey, but who knows? When you take a trip to Miami, do you get paid? A lot of times, yeah. Sometimes, no. I mean, I... God, I love these, like, influencers that literally will go on these extravagant trips where they're literally getting flown first class. And it's so common. They'll get, you know, flown first class. They will get put in five-star hotels. They will get amazing, you know, chauffeur, free alcohol, free whatever. And they also get paid to go. How the other half live? My Jeepers Creepers. I, I fucking love Miami. There was a point where I wanted to, like, move there. Um, Let's not forget she's allegedly friends with James again. Oh, she talks about that. I know that. Because as I am from Vegas, it, I always say it's like Vegas and L.A. had a baby on a beach. <laughs> and it's like, I love it there. So, I mean, I've made a lot of friends and connections out there and have done a lot of, like, brand work and different stuff. And sometimes I just go for fun. Jeff and I just went for Lele Pond's wedding. What? And oh, Lele Pond's that, is but so But I went cringy. sober, which was Lele Pond's Miami is so sober. cringy. It's like, I had new lenses on, bro. Like, I just never I seen Lily anything Pons. like it, especially the dichotomy of how it was in January for me right before I went sober versus how it just was. That is a full circle was, moment. You should be yeah. proud of yourself, though. That's, that's the thing is I, I'll never not want to still kind of do the things I do, so I've done, like, Cabo sober on this journey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. Lily Pons is Latina. Sorry, I forgot to acknowledge About that. About... Oh my god, time. <laughs> Cabo sober. Like that it's just they're you land and they're giving you tequila shots, you know, and they like haze you out there. That's like their job at the restaurants. If you say no, they're like, no, no, take it. You know, and Ooh. I was like, oh my god, like whole nine. So I've I've still been trying to do things, but it's it's interesting for sure. What's your biggest source of revenue? My biggest source of revenue? Yeah, how do you make money? Is it only fans? Um, I mean I have a lot of different things that are kind of competing, but I guess only fans of my agency are up there. Um, we just Okay, but I don't believe that this agency is still a thing because we never heard about it. Do you remember we made videos about it like last year that Tana's Angels or something like that or like Angels Agency or something? What was it called? And we never heard about it again. Tana's Angels Agency. Here it is. Is it really a thing? Tana Mojo launches Angel Angels Agency on the 26th of April. And this is the only news article. Not this photo. This is the only news article about it. I do not believe that this is a real thing. I do not believe that this is a real thing. I'm Tana Mojo, the business bitch. <laughs> I need to start rewatching The Office. I might do that tonight. I might start rewatching The Office. I wonder what it's on. I'm also watching The Housewives, so I need to like multitask. I started taking on new clients again, and I have so. Much I don't believe the agency is a real with thing. With that and like helping people, and mm. that's like a big part of my life right now. And obviously, Dizzy is and was doing very great brand deals i guess are really this is her wine uh, company which is which probably makes surprising sense. coming out of my mouth because i'm so non-brand safe so it's like it's maybe not a big bag from like coca-cola but it's like a big bag from like a sex toy brand or something oh me you know? code adam 50 adam and eve 50 off free shipping one item or wait 50 percent off one item and free shipping in the u.s and canada 90 day no hats return 24 7 customer service Huge ones of their proceeds goes to fighting the spread of HIV all around the world. A bag is a bag. It's a bag is a bag. You know what I'm saying? I probably won't be in the Amazon studios for <laughs> any time, but, uh, you know. Um, and just, I, I'm a side hustle girl as well. Just like the other random stuff, investments and different things I do. And yeah. I just can't see Tana Mojo investing. Touring, stuff like that. I'm going to tour. I know Brooke and I want to tour canceled really heavily this year. And I think that'll be a good source of revenue and so fun. You're like rich, rich. <laughs> it's funny because I I am and I'm bad about this and I talk about it but I'm so comparison oriented yeah like no matter how much money I make I wake up every day like you are a failure <laughs> yeah, but who are you comparing yourself to I don't even know it's just it's always random I think today I saw like Logan Paul and KSI became oh, the sponsor mm -hmm. for like Prime became the sponsor for the Dodgers or something and I was like Oh my god! Like I need to work harder, and then it's like Tana, but you're not KSI. Like, you're Tana Mojo. Like it's, it, it doesn't even make sense to compare. You know what I mean? You're doing but your I own just, thing. I always will. You know, like I always want to make more, do more, work harder type of thing. So okay, is it hard to have proper friends when you're rich? 
I'm, I mean, you know when you see me at least, I'm very lucky to have the same friends I've always had. Truth. I'll always be scared of a bitch who has a new fucking set of best friends every couple months. That is like red flag waving in the sky. It scares the shit out of me, you know? And I, I moved out here with Amari and Ashley, and they've been by my side, and Isabella and all my friends are... She's my... been friends with her core friends for so long. Does she upload on YouTube? I've seen her upload quite a bit recently and i mean she's doing her podcast and i also yeah you don't really want to be logan paul or jake paul babe best ari all my best yeah. friends are from vegas and people i know that loved me when i had nothing and hunter even like i just i'm really lucky to kind of keep the same best friends who i knew have loved me at my lows and when i had nothing and i mean i'm definitely a, like i'm sure you can attest to this pretty guarded now like mm -hmm. just with new friends and stuff i i love a fun new friend but i'm like you love me now. Like, if I'm in my worst scandal, do you love and rep me the same way? If oh. I fucking went under tomorrow, would you love and rep me the same way? If But also, who the fuck know? are you? Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know you. Exactly. I don't know you for a fucking hole in the wall. And what are your motives? Why are you here? 100%. And I'm just, I'm so, like, like that. Especially, my friends are a little more accepting, and they'll bring new people in, and you'll just see me in the corner, like, scanning the new person at the house for, like, an hour. Like, and I'm not a bitch about it. I just... No, you, 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 you. I think the conversation around protecting your own boundaries is something that, like, people need to feel the need that they don't have to, like, apologize for. I feel like protecting your own peace and protecting your own boundaries and setting your own boundaries is so important. Is so important. These are the right types of feelings and concerns one should have when a new person just stumbles into the group. For sure. And I've been doing this shit for, like, eight years, so I've seen every person mm -hmm. try to expose me or get something out of my world or be shady shysty fake like i've i feel like she could also be accused of doing that to other seen people it all so much that i feel like my radars are pretty good now you know does that partially fuel why you try to get ahead of things like that you may be involved in like you're kind of forward and, and transparent definitely very forward i think that's just how i've always been like i just say what's on my mind which definitely bites me in the ass mm -hmm. but i do kind of live with a like sense of paranoia like at all times of people's intentions and you know what i mean like yeah. what people are doing and what people are posting and what how the internet's going to perceive that and stuff i've learned to balance that you know there are times in my life like right post out of a scandal where i'm like fucking paranoid as hell about everything and that's not a way to live that's a shitty way to live you know so i balance it now but i i would venture to say i'm a pretty like paranoid aware person i don't know about all you maybe this is like a very unpopular opinion but i feel like being paranoid about new people and stuff like that actually can be a good thing i would say i'm pretty paranoid to make friends i'm pretty paranoid to meet new people but i feel like i would rather be like that than just be so loose and let everyone in what do we feel about that do we agree or disagree with that sentiment it's self-protection yeah okay people feel the same okay do you see yourself as scandalous um as of late... I a mean, healthy balance, okay. I can't even lie and say no, though. I'll still say some shit on a podcast where, like, an hour later, I'm like, why the fuck would I say that? You know what I mean? Like, I... I don't look at it as scandalous. Like, I'm not... But then again, at the same time, I'm like... <laughs> maybe I am just scandalous. A lot of it, to me, in my head, is just, like, I'm... I just say what's on my mind, and it bites me in the ass sometimes, or I'll say the truth about people and Jesus. some people don't like the truth and that can be pretty scandalous um within itself but then i am just scandalous sometimes like flashing my tits on some shit or doing some oh my god shit, you know i don't time know. and place you have to pick a side in the david dobrik jeff thing oh here we go here we go i love how he was waiting to ask that he was waiting to ask that the segue between scandalous and this was was where he was going with it oh zach wants the tea he wants the tea all right, the question is, are you picking a side in Jeff and David? Have to is... Well, you did, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, oh, he's I don't answering for use her. the narrative of have to because that kind of seems like someone's, like, gun to my head, like, you have to pick this side, and oh, that's Jesus. not how it was. Time and place. Um, it was a very interesting thing for me to navigate, I think, because um, I'd known David for a very, very long time, and that is how you would say I met Jeff was through time David, and you know? And David did a lot for me and my career and putting me in videos and even just like taking the time to be in mine and inviting me to things and was always very nice and welcoming to me and my friends 
in the regard of his events and the things that he does and okay. sending me stuff and made me feel very... I mean, again, you can't really excuse someone being an awful person just because, you know, they made me feel nice. They made me feel comfortable. I mean, that take I'm so tired of. And I've heard so many people say that about the most evil people you've ever met. And it happens in, like, our day-to-day -day life where people will be like, you know, and unfortunately, I hate to take it here, and I don't mean to com compare, um, trigger warning, it's very, very, very common that I've heard people in my, like, old friend groups fall out because someone will be okay trigger warning someone will be like essayed and someone will speak up about it and then someone will be like oh but he was really nice to me or you know he wouldn't do that to me or something like that and i've like in old friend groups like witnessed that and that's like such a prominent thing i don't mean to compare it to that but like i mean it's the same thing of like you know well they're lovely to me you know what i mean oh my god beauty obsessed thank you so much included and stuff like that and i never want to negate that but you, you you can see though that it was transactional right 100 percent. and i think yeah i mean that's a that's a lot of oh that's a good point he brought up you know everything david did for you was transactional you, is, gave david that you can have a nice friendship with someone and be aware that it is kind of transactional like we're probably not gonna have like a movie night and kick it and giggle like it's probably gonna be for the internet you know but i can look back and be grateful for that time and those moments and stuff but i think that as I got to know Jeff, um, and a lot more about the whole situation, you know, like I, we, I saw every, she was watching those spill sash videos. She got up to date on that information thing that happened online. We all did. Um, but you don't really know the mental effects of that or the d really dark parts as well. Just things that never made it to the internet in those situations until you have the privilege of getting close to someone and as I got closer and closer to Jeff, it just, I think it is one of those situations where you can't be best friends with Jeff and feel right. You can't be a friend to all. I'm so, like, I will always die on that hill. I do not think you can be a friend to all. I will always die on that hill. Personal life professionally anything i do not think that i i do not think that that can be a thing and anyone who i witness who is a friend or all, i always will side eye them even if they're doing it to keep the peace or whatever i will always side eye it about being close friends with david yeah. or be best friends with david and i guess his friends you know they don't want to it's kind of you know they're in court like it's a, it's it's a it's, it's real. a battle, for yeah, sure. It's, it, and it's, it's a very real thing. Rightfully man. so, though, because a man's life was put at, at, at stake and yeah. his mental health. I like that Zach's very pro-Jeff. The future of his health is still yeah. in jeopardy. And it's so in And I'm pretty sure and Zach and David have hung out. I realized for a long time, or people realize even now, like, after sitting beside, like, Jeff's side while he had just gotten his 11th eye surgery, Jesus. and you... When you Jeepers, love someone so creepers. much and care about them so much and you see their spirit just, like, sucked out of their body, like, just... Somehow all that happened to Jeff, still getting surgeries, and yet David's friend group tried to make Jeff the villain. And Jeff is such a resilient person. Zach's like, doing a good job every single interview. time and stand up in this situation and see it through. No pun intended, obviously, but... Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Time and place. Even though he's so resilient. No, 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 no. You don't want to talk about eye puns. Cheapers. You see the total that, that guard, takes Tana. on someone. She is his best and friend, so I mean, she's aware of his boundaries a lot more than what me and you are. So, how sad it is, and just all of the health trials and tribulations I've like seen him go through for this, and seeing really no support from the, where it originated and stuff. Oh, it's crazy! It can't help but kind of light a fire under you. And there was a gray area time too, where I would had still was still attending. Dobrik events and stuff like that and then it just got to a point where it was like I don't even though this is just transactional LA bullshit where I pop into a party now and again I don't even want to do that because I we talked about this where she got a lot of backlash because she went to the David Dobrik um like pizzeria event or something like that I don't ever want my best friend to feel like I don't 100 so I'm glad like she's him. like even I'm glad she's finally it took her a little bit of time but I'm really 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 glad that she's finally saying that you know I'm not gonna play both sides I'm not gonna go to promotional events for David I'm not gonna do this or whatever you know Thank God. 
I mean, a true friend wouldn't. When I was there at those things. It's not, it's not petty drama. David nearly ended your best friend Jeff's life. I was talking to people and David's friends and shit like that. And they'd be like, we love Jeff. We miss him so much. We, they, and I'm like. No, dude. How about the vlog? That's vlog? called the cash Kool-Aid. Yeah. And no. they're <laughs> sipping it because they're getting paid to sip it. For sure. And they're afraid that that teat is going to go away. For because sure. Because breaking news. No offense to any of you. I see you all out all the time. Oh, Zach is doing a great job with this interview. Oh my god, hi Aaron, my mod Aaron's here. Zach is doing a really good job with this interview. Like a really good job. I'm very, very, very surprised. Not that I, I'm underestimating Zach, but a lot of people normally don't do a good job. He is your lifeblood. He is your soul. Oh my god, he's looking directly source. at me. He is your don't soul look at me. I didn't do anything. Source. He I is didn't the do anything. For so much of you. I didn't do anything. Oh my god, Andrew and R in here. 100%. But the reality is Love. you are more than whatever the fuck you've given to David Dobrik. Oh my god, don't look at me. I didn't do anything. Stop. Don't look at... Ignore the tan lines. Stop. I didn't do anything. Oh, he's... Oh, he's gone. Oh, he's gone. Rick. Yeah. Have integrity and some sort of self-worth. Okay? For sure. Oh and I mean, maybe there's some real Time friendship in there. I, I guess I would hope if I did some fuck shit like that, that Amari and Ashley would still would, rock with me, I guess. But also, but also call I would, you the fuck out. Like, like it, 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 I do that to somebody. Okay, Dan. I put you at risk tomorrow, and for a bit, you lose a finger. I hope every person close to me is ripping me a new asshole. That's so true. For one, putting you in that position to That's begin so with. Two, putting you in that position without the proper accoutrements, a.k.a. <laughs> having an e e uh, emergency medical services if necessary. Having, I don't know, fucking first aid kits. The whole fucking thing. That's the thing. Wow. 100%. It all just should have never wow. happened. And Holy. That's one wow. thing about me that I just I can say from my own personal thing. If I ever put one of my friends in those positions, I would be fully indebted to them and so transparent about that on and off camera, no matter what. I I wouldn't just be kind of trying to make it go away. You know, like watching Jeff pay out of pocket for all this shit and worry oh about the future uh, of his health uh, for the rest of Oh my god, of me and Zach had the same reaction. Yeah, the fact that so he's now eleven eye surgeries done and he's paying for it all. He's paying for it all. Life is like, fucked, you know? Well, he's buying a $10 million fucking house. Get a fucking grip. Do, yes. do any of those, oh, like, the vlog squad, do they I love this. David, or is everyone kind of just still like, kind of scared I of I don't know what I happens love behind this. closed doors, and I don't, you know, I, I've never I this. personally witnessed a situation where someone would be this is so there good. to do that, so mm -hmm. I really, I have no comment on that. Um, but everything I've said about it is... Okay, I Tana. Tana. She's like, I have no comment on, you know, what the vlog squad think. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. And you should. I feel like Zach's energy is almost as if, like, he's Jeff's best friend. Like, I would be writing and dying way harder. 100% true. You know, when I, like, see all the people, it's like, oh, we miss Jeff. How's Jeff? Da -da 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 -da. And then I'm kind of just like. And last time I said that, um, that I had she that got in trouble for it. Um, I think I said it on Jeff FM. I was like, last night I was at a party and you know i had these interactions with these people they came on hold on sorry this is just like such a like a weird point we're almost half an hour in and i she's been holding that vape the entire time i don't think she's hit it once <laughs> line and said tana's a liar tana's a liar she lied da -da -da -da. i actually haven't even like talked about that yet um and I was just like kind of beside myself because it's like, <laughs> yeah, because what would I get out of lying about no, that? You know, they're saying you lied because they're all afraid of David. If like, but what the fuck? But what or I think afraid of being. Look, she keeps putting it to her mouth, but not. <laughs> it's like a little half right, it. Afraid of the situation, or they don't want to look like that type of person. She I guess. keeps going like that, like, and then not doing it. You know, and I was just like. If I'm lying about something, at least I like I'm gonna make it fucking fun. I'm gonna say I was like at Disneyland with Drake. Like I have no need to lie about a vlog squad member interaction. There's just I've come too far in my career and my life to get anything out of that. So I was just kind of like, okay, okay, you know. 
Ooh, I get douche chills, man. It like really, <laughs> I it is. It, Maybe she's. I have a real problem. Maybe she's with people who have face tuning every single one of these fucking photos. I'm kidding, get I no, you, we should. I genuinely have a problem with people who make so much money and they use other people as ways to generate that revenue, and then they give nothing in return. Like I'm a believer. In- Is that what he said? Dish chills, Mama. I don't want to hear about all that. I don't want to hear about all that. And you get back what you put out there. So <laughs> his times are coming, but like. I will forever remember the first day I met David Dobrik. He came up to me. He and Jason were watching our... I'm so obsessed with how much... 45 days to Los Angeles. Mama, that is so soon, and I have not even booked a hotel. Hmm. Well, well, show religious. I love how much he hates studying our studio. And I literally told him, "You, you are not the star. Your friends are the fucking stars. You are nothing without your friends. <laughs> they are exactly what keeps you going, and that's why people tune in. Like you yeah. are only as good as the people you have around you. And if you don't treat them right, you're fucked." I said that to him maybe in 2018 or something. Yeah, 20, I don't know. Uh, and clearly, none of it resonated because. There's abuse, and then there's that. Like, oh my God. Yeah. if you lost the finger, Dan, I'd be. I, by the way, I'm indebted to Dan even without him losing a limb. Yeah. Okay. Because like, if you were to lose a limb, kept this show afloat for 13 years. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 13 just, years, Dan. Yeah. He's 13. I've been doing this for 16. Well, it shows. I mean, I always yeah, say you, you were the greatest. Old. No, not physically. Hold the fucking phone. You are the greatest interviewer of our generation, and I will say that always. I was gassing thank you to you. page like the whole way here. Um, thank you, but. Thank you. I feel that 100%. I think that thank you, you have to just to be me. grateful to the people around you. And obviously he gave them careers and you could say that that's the pay. I'm just saying when it comes down to like detrimental shit, you got to be there for someone. But I always say to Jeff, like, I never want to be like everything happens for a reason to someone when their eyes fucking out of the socket. Ooh, I wouldn't say that, babe. You know, that that doesn't help anyone sleep at night. I would. But I mean, yeah. I think Jeff is so funny and so talented Fucking that hilarious. being able to leave that and be his own presence and not need anyone shows so much. The you know, like you're man. so much more than so and so's friend. But do you feel a responsibility? Because I know you've gone to where is it Utah when he has to get surgeries. Mm-hmm. Do you feel a responsibility to be there for him in those situations? Nothing negative. No, no, no type of like. Oh, I feel this pressure and need and responsibility to be there for him. If anything, I want to. Yeah. And Jeff is very much like. No one pity me. I'm a fucking man. Her, Jim, Tam, laundry, fucking her. Like, he's... This is a good podcast. I'm living for the David dragging. I'm loving the interview style from Zach. He's doing a really good job. You know what I mean? Like, even if I'm like... I was not expecting it to be this good. He's like, shut the fuck up. Like, dude, take some content. (laughs) Exploit me. Like, (laughs) Like, just like... He is not like that at all. But we honestly... Him and his friends, I don't give enough credit to all of the people around him, are... It's. I feel like it's almost similar to me and my friends. Like, they're just amazing, hilarious people, and we have so much fun together. I think across, like, a lot of my social media career, this is one of the friend groups that I feel the realest and the closest and, like... That's good. ...with and actually just love being around so much. So, and we... I think we have so much... Even though, like, we went to Utah and he had to get that surgery and he felt really bad, like... We all still, and obviously Jeff probably believed, but I'm saying we all still had a great time and made the most of it and had fun and you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's never like a dark type of obligation. I genuinely like love being there for him and I know he'd do the same for me. So And you co-host the podcast, correct? Yes, I do. And we have so much fucking fun doing that. Well, while Cancelled was uh, her podcast under construction. <laughs> um, I was missing it so much, and I just I went on Jeff FM one time randomly, and it, we were like, "Wait, that was her and Jeff do have a good dynamic." I will give them both credit for that. So fun, so amazing. And I had no faith. People in loved Jeff it. FM. I kept doing it, and it's just kind of like snowballed. And now we are in the works of kind of doing making our own show as well. Amazing. So it's it's just fun as fuck. Like you know what I mean? I would do it for free, like forever. Okay, cancel gets canceled because why? I'm going to say a controversial opinion. I feel that, like, a lot of people were saying, that, you know, the way Colleen Ballinger and Trisha Paytas are doing a podcast together and it's going to be, like, the new frenemies. I honestly... Oh, my God! 
An anonymous gifter just gifted five subs. Oh my, Jesus Christ, thank you so much. Oh my God, Jesus. Time and place. And you did it at midnight on my stream. Thank you so much, my fucking God. Um, what do you call it? Um, where was I going? Um, thank you. Um, I was saying how people were saying that Trisha and Colleen would be like the new frenemies. I have an unpopular opinion. I feel like the only people that would ever replicate a frenemies would be Tana and Jeff if they wanted to. I feel that the only YouTubers who would be able to replicate frenemies would be Tana and Jeff. Like, if they were getting into drama and stuff like that, I feel that it's only them two. I don't feel that it's Trisha Paytas and Colleen Ballinger. I feel that it's Tana and Jeff. Um, Do we agree or disagree? Tana, Jeff, I say yeah. You can be honest. It's not, it's not about honesty. It's about what I can and can't say. Um, Are there legal disputes going on? I've only heard rumblings. There, nothing is going on now, and we are working with amazing people who are our, like, best friends, right-hand people, to create an awesome, fun environment. And... <laughs> oh, girl. I'm she really excited stressed. for the future of Cancel. So what's going to be different this time around? I mean, we never... One? Taking a break was like, we never wanted to do that. You know what I mean? So I'm so excited to be back podcasting again and I wish we had never stopped and stuff like that but this time around I think I mean we have full control and we are able to do it whatever however whenever we want I think that I'm at a point in my career where especially creative wise I don't really want or need people kind of telling me what to do or giving you know what I mean yeah giving me any type of I always appreciate healthy guidance, but it's like, Welcome I know what I steady. want when it comes to a show of mine or things like that. So, I mean, it's just everything we have always wanted it to be. And I, I, I'm grateful for the first time around as well. I think we learned so much and we learned that we love this and that we never. I know that her and Brooke's podcast is actually very enjoyable to watch as well. Her and Brooke have a good dynamic. I want to stop. And I always thought Brooke how was annoying, to podcast but I take it back. properly and you know what I mean? How to interview a guest and all that type of stuff and it's out of my house now which has been so fun oh, that's great. like getting to just walk upstairs and fucking talk my shit and the people that are helping us with it are jeff's people oh sick. so i've worked with them for like so fucking long as is and they already like know me like the back of their hand you know what i mean whether it's camera angles or topics i want to talk about or what i'm going to want cut before i do like all that type of shit so it's just it's a fully oiled machine now and we are We've got great guests coming, and we're so stoked, Let's honestly. Let's go. Yeah. Is uh, Brooke going to be talking to her ex-boyfriend on this show? <sighs> She's not here, so let me just, let me, I'll say Girl, my that vape in her hand is doing nothing. Like, FaceTime her. Um, where, where is she? I Honestly, he, Dan is like... You should invite them both on the show. I know. I yeah, really... I, I she's had some... When does she talk about James? I know James comes up very soon. Uh, and I can't wait for there to be a Netflix for seven years. Brooke's not ready when on you talk about James? Young Age. And it was a person who was like my mother. Be able to kind of have her talk about it. A real expose here. And yeah. Uh, yeah. It's gonna, In my it's, opinion. Yeah, it's going to come eventually. Mm. For sure. Just, I mean, uh, you know. Also, like, the idea... Just whatever. James Do you Charles. remember what Netflix series? She talks Who about cared? it somewhere. <laughs> Full, I guess. But it just doesn't sit right with me, I uh, guess. No. And we didn't see her a lot. So, I, I, if anything, I just feel empathy for her. And, and, and to obviously, I'm not going to be the one to, like, leak it. But it, I'm, like, I love that. Like, to everyone, mm. especially in the public eye and on camera. So I think I've always kind of been the type of person that's like, if you... She's talking about her friend Brooke here. I don't think any of us really care about that, really. Get to know me. I am so much more than these one, like, sides that you see of me online. But I'm everything. Live the life I live in. Tools that a lot for 13 years old. Like, they just try and try and try and sad now if I didn't have that, you know? Like, you know what I mean? I, I feel a lot more for women who just so many, like... Approaching a conversation like this with Tana Mojo. Yeah, and I think that the event... That vape is doing nothing. Anything that does kind of weed me out of being a, a draft pick for a yeah. lot of those cynic girls. They're always... You know what I mean? That's interesting. Hold on. Um, I'm going to do something here. Um, to search a word on YouTube. 
using transcript. I'm going to find this before I go, because I feel like we've gotten everything that like we would get out of this. If you want to see a little life hack, by the way, that I do, um, the hotkey is control and F. So I'm going to type in James. Hello. And now, anytime James, the word James is mentioned, it will be highlighted. I think. Maybe they don't talk about him. Maybe they don't. Maybe they don't. Yeah, I think they they might not. I swear I did see a clip of it, though. I mean, I just don't really care to hear about her friend, Brooke. I mean, no, no hate. I mean, this has been a really good podcast up until now. Um, addicted to Heights. Both impulsive. Good time. I have a lot in common. Oh, wait. Hold on. Away from this person and when the highs are so high and the lows are so low especially in that situation imagine the drastic nature of how high the highs are and how low the lows are you become so addicted to that dopamine you become so addicted to the highs of that person texting you or even just the peace of being this on is Bryce Hall, good by terms the way. with them because of how anxious it is when you're not because of how volatile and shit can this is why i hate dating because i turn crazy you when it's not so i so i, I if anything i just feel empathy for her and I think that's what fuels my almost, I guess, disdain towards him because it's like you've done this to someone I love, you know? 100%. Yeah. You have a good relationship with Bryce Hall. <laughs> I like that friendship. I love... Bryce Hall, I think, recently was talking shit about her as well, which is something That friendship, to know. I actually do. Bryce is one of those people where it's like, yes, we make content, but I actually, I love to right? kick it with him off camera. And we have... Dating is too as, as much as I hate to say it, we painstakingly have a lot in common, you know? <laughs> like, um, maybe not. I mean, we are both impulsive, wild, say what's on our mind, yeah. controversial, wild <laughs> people who love to have a good fucking time and sometimes piss everyone off by doing it. And I think we both had stages of life where we really needed to grow. And that was kind of before the public eye. And we both were able to kind of cope with that and navigate that with humor. And both. Like him. <laughs> we do. Yeah. I, I, I see him usually at your, I'm your so house. Focused your right old now. house. One of your old houses. Is he what? He said he only hooked up with her to for Clyde. I used to see him at your old house or one of your old big. houses. Yeah, like I feel time. like if we, either one of us have like a party or even like a get together, such a shitty like, thing to say. We'll both kind of be there, and our friends all get along, right? And shit, you know what I mean? It's an so awful thing to it's say. Fine, for sure. true. He's not like my everyday bestie, but it's just like someone in LA I actually like. Uh, which Bryce is good. Hall, healthy. Yeah, friends are nice. Friends are nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When when I make a friend in this industry, you know. Like a fucking a fellow clouded TikTok fucking friend, and I actually like them. Like I love that. Like I I like cherish those friendships because it's like there's so many fucking people that it's like fake. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, Bryce Hall is anything but fake. Yeah, he is exactly who you see on camera off. One hundred percent. Which I just those are the type of people that I get along with the most. I always okay, say it's maybe like, they don't talk about him. Not, James Charles, I mean, no, like no shade really to the people who are a completely different person online because if that's how they're building their business and whatever, maybe not. but like I could never do that, and I just I fuck with the people who are kind of like that, you know. Do you feel like the podcasts have allowed people to better understand who you are? All right, maybe not. Well, anyway, that was a really, really, really good podcast. So basically, everything past this um, does not revolve around David and Jeff. This is a really, really, really... I don't think they added it. I just can't find it. But, I mean, there's a lot about, like, her friend um, that, you know, I really don't care about. Um, it's just not really relevant to us right now and, like, what we're looking for. Um, let me just do one more... Um, parties i don't think so i don't think so well anyway this was a really good podcast and i'm like oh wait 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 wait, wait. no i don't think so yeah um anyway no really 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 good podcast uh zach really surprised me not again that i don't think that he wouldn't have done a good job or whatever like that just that this was really good and i love his hatred for david dobrik i think it was really 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 good um yeah, they probably just didn't mention James by name. That's annoying. I think they said, like, friends, though. 
Okay, wait. I know that she said friends. Hold on. Friends. Okay, wait. What's your friends? Plans with your friends nope. on the fight night. Nope, You've nope. got to just the fuck buddy and then all of a sudden the fuck buddies don't think it's that we're cooking breakfast and then they're they're coming up just taking up doing other things and i had friends but like my my friends were also working Isn't this so we all so kind of had like our own thing going on yeah. pretty consistently yeah it's tara is one of my best friends and i've known her for like six or seven years and I'm, i have a lot of friends who do and i'm always just like it's to each their own i guess you know if you feel if you feel content with yourself and you don't feel like shit Someone in LA I actually like. Would either one of us have like a party or even like a get together? Oh, like, wait, is this it? Have I find it? Have I find it? I think sometimes and I'm like, whoa. Did I find it? I'm learning from Bryce already. <laughs> this is scary. Oh, wait. But love him. Maybe I, I find it. Yeah, he's a freak. <laughs> we like him. Love him. We do. Yeah. If I, this I, isn't it, they do not talk about it. I see him usually at your, your house or your old house. One of your old houses. Is he what? I used to see him at your old house or one of your old houses. Yeah, like, I feel time. like if we, either one of us have, like, a party or even, like, a get-together, like, we'll both kind of be there and our friends all get along and shit. You know what I mean? So, it's fun. For sure. sure. He's not, like, my everyday bestie, but... I oh, no, that was just about Bryce. Well, anyway, we will end it there for this podcast. I'm gonna... Hats off. Bravo. This was really, really, really good. Um, I feel like Tana's definitely holding back when it comes to David and Jeff. But I feel that Zach was there to, like, speak for her. You know what I mean? This was really, really, really enjoyable to watch, I'll be honest. Um, so, yeah, thank you for watching. Okay, what do we think?